talk about a lot of people who um, want to uh, be good to animals, they'll give up red meat and say, uh, but I still eat chicken. Mm -hmm. And they think it's healthier. And uh, will you please explain why chicken actually might be the least healthy in, in, in so many ways? Um, it's one of my biggest frustrations. And I have family members who are doing that. But I also think, like, to the listeners who do eat meat and who are on that journey, keep going. It's not a judgment. Every step is a step in the right direction. And if you're eating less cows and pigs, then great. Keep going. Keep moving in that direction. But to think that somehow that chickens are healthier or less deserving in some way because they are um, a bird rather than a mammal, I think that is problematic. And the number one cause of food poisoning, and this is not, this was a University of Florida um, epidemiology study, of number one cause of food poisoning in the United States is chicken. And the reason is, that chickens are raised in horrifically crowded condition living on their own feces. So it's called litter. It's not really litter. It's not like a guinea pig's litter. It's a bunch of shavings that have been pooped on over many, many flocks, over many, many years, and then combed over, and then more chickens are put on top. People think that that litter is changed. It's never changed. Many farmers I talk to don't change it for years. So then the chicken are pecking and pecking and pecking, living on this. This is getting in their gut. Then they go to slaughter. The slaughter is done so fast that the gut contents, including Campylobacter, Salmonella, E. coli, are getting on the meat. So the industry solution to this is, is a lot of educative material on cook your meat well, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's not working because chicken still is the number one cause of food poisoning. I will say I have had Campylobacter, but not from eating chickens, but from hanging out with live ones in an industrial setting. And I thought I was going to die. I don't know if either one of you have had it, but I had dysentery from it, which is a horrific situation. I had to go on antibiotics. I lost like 15 pounds in a week. It's unbelievable. And this is because the animals are living in such a horrific condition. Uh, so it's not healthy in, in, in the sort of food poisoning sense, but it's also not providing the chickens we eat today are have more fat content than protein content. People think that this is a lean meat, but these are obese animals. These animals have been, they're essentially obese babies and we're eating obese babies full of fat. And a lot of the meat now is breaking down and sort of the muscular content of these animals is starting to uh, almost disintegrate because of the muscular disease they have from growing so fast. There's nothing about this that is healthy or even appetizing if that appeals to you. It's unhealthy. It's disease ridden. These are birds that are very unhealthy. I mean, if you are what you eat, this is not something, someone that you want to be eating. And they also, um, to make the chickens look plumper, uh, the meat, don't they inject them with a lot of salt before they package them? Yeah, and you can, that's a great point. You can look on the packages and sometimes you can see that. So if you see like um, sodium chloride water and then chicken, you should know that that chicken has been injected with salt water to plump it up and make it look and taste better than it actually is. Cause it doesn't really taste like anything anymore. And if you talk to people who are like, Oh, back in the day, my chicken used to taste like something. Now it's just rubber and we season it. It's just a conduit for flavors. Part of the part of the problem is, is the kind of breeding we, we do with them. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.